first of all thanks for being here in my youtube channel so in this lesson number six on the topic ratio and proportion so now we are going to solve some of the question that is based on the concept called income and expenditure so this income and expenditure concept are most most important for the complete quantitative aptitude session it is not only important for ratio proportion topic it is most important for all the quantitative aptitude session for example if you are learning percentage topic there 30 percentage of the question you can able to see in the concept of income and expenditure if you are learning profit and loss or if you are learning discount or if you are learning a uh, average topic most of the quantitative aptitude topics you can able to see this income expenditure concept if you are preparing for staff selection commission or a railway exams or a campus interview just look at the previous year question papers at least in your exams you can able to see one question that is from the concept income and expenditure so this income expenditure concept are most important in the topic data interpretation you know based upon the question that is based upon the chart table chart bar chart pie chart etc in all those cases where 50 percentage of the question will be based only on the concept of income and expenditure why because this income expenditure savings or the basic concept what we are facing every day yes or no for example if you take my monthly income for example i am saying my monthly income youtube monthly income is 40000 so which is my income is yes or no so 40000 is the income so from this 40000 i am spending 20000 for the rent and and the 3000 for the electricity bill etc so the total amount what i spend is 30000 right we can say this the amount that i spent got it and then what is the remaining amount which i have will be the savings so 10,000 is the savings amount, understood or not? So this 40,000 is my income, got it? So for this 30,000, from the 40,000, I have spent some of the money. So this spending amount can also be written as expenditure, yes or no? So expenditure and spends both are same. For example, I am spending 20,000 for rent and the transport 2,000 and then electricity 3,000, food 5,000, etc. So which comes under the concept of expenditure. And the remaining amount, what I have, will be the savings amount. So if we are going to solve a question that is based on income and expenditure, always keep one formula in mind that income, right? So income is always equals to how much money I spend, expenditure plus the remaining amount what I have. Understood or not, right? So everywhere we use this formula, right? It's not, it's not a formula, it's the basic thing, right? So income is equal to expenditure plus savings. So 40,000 is my income. So the amount that I spend is 30,000 and the savings what I have is 10,000. So 30,000 plus 10,000 is equal to my income that is 40,000. Understood or not? So if you are going to solve a question in income and expenditure, even in percentage topic or even in data interpretation, whatever be, but always remember this income is equal to expenditure plus savings or else the same thing can also be written as income minus expenditure is equal to savings yes or no right we can also write like this by bringing this expenditure towards left hand side so income minus expenditure is equal to savings or else you can say income minus savings income minus savings is equals to expenditure everything is same got it or not right so by learning only this concept alone you can able to write all the different kinds of formula so another important thing what you need to remember in the topic income and expenditure is be careful after finding the answer and going with the options for example in the question all the data will be that is based on monthly income for example i'm saying right, where most of the students make this mistake in the exams so in in the given question right all the data they will give you in terms of monthly income monthly income, monthly expenditure, monthly savings. But in the final answer, they will ask in terms of yearly, right? So final answer will be based on yearly. Understood or not? All the value will give in terms of monthly income, monthly expenditure and monthly savings. But the final answer, what they will be asking us to find 
yearly salary or yearly income or yearly expenditure so what do you guys have to do after finding the answer for this question multiply by 12 because if you multiply by 12 months resultant will be the yearly income or yearly expenditure or yearly savings based upon the question similarly in the question sometimes you can able to see all the values they will give in terms of yearly but the answer final answer what they will be asking us to find in terms of monthly so after finding the final answer you need to divide by 12 because we have found the answer for the yearly basis but then the answer what they are asking in terms of monthly basis so you need to divide by 12 where most of the students will make a mistake right so they will find the answer correctly but without reading the question properly they will mark the answer so always remember one thing uh, question solving everything will be easy but the final answer you need to be very much careful you need to check whether they are asking the answer in terms of yearly basis or monthly basis so keep that in mind so these two things are most important that's it so income and expenditure is most easy and uh, here i'm going to solve only five question that is based on income and expenditure so don't forget to watch all the five question try to understand the concept 100 percentage not 99 percentage even that one percentage makes you mistake in the exams so the basic concept what i'm going to tell in this income and expenditure try to understand that right 100 percentage be strong on the concept so once you're strong on the concepts like how to find expenditure how to find income and how to uh, find the income by giving the savings amount so everything if you know the concepts then solving all the tough level questions will be easy understood so now let me move on to all the five questions that is based on income and expenditure question number one so the ratio of income of p and q is 3 is to 4 and the ratio of their expenditure is 2 is to 3 so if both of them save rupees 6000 each the income of p is so when just here what is the target our target is to find what is the income of the person p so initially in the question where income of P and Q is in the ratio, right? So income of P and Q given in the ratio that is 3 is to 4 as well as the expenditure is also given. So expenditure ratio is what? 2 is to 3. So this will be the income ratio. So income ratio they have given as well as expenditure ratio they have given as well as they have given another value that both of them save 6000 each. So their savings amount will be 6000 each. By using this data, our target is to find what is the income of the person P. So when just listen carefully, right? So there are many different ways to solve this question. You can able to solve the question by a normal traditional method, which will be a lengthy way. Or else there is a shortcut, but 40% of the questions you can able to solve in a shortcut, but not all the 100% of the question. So according to me, I would say that learn the traditional method, but even you can simplify the traditional method, right? Instead of solving an off a page, you can just by writing one simple formula, you can able to solve the same income expenditure question in two lines. I can teach you that. We already learned a formula, what? Not a formula, the basic thing, income is equal to expenditure plus savings, is on. So you can say that income, minus savings is equals to expenditure is or no by keeping this point in our mind income minus savings is equal to expenditure so income of first person and the second person is how much three and four so just listen here the first person income can be taken as 3x and the second person income can be taken as 4x so 3x will be the income of the first person minus of savings how much he save six thousand so first person income 3x and the first person savings amount is 6000 is equal to first person expenditure is 2. Right? So keep one value as it is in terms of ratio. Got it? So divided by the second person income is how much 4x and how much he saves 6000 and the second person expenditure is how much 3. Got it or not? So if you write this equation alone correctly then solving all the question in the topic income and expenditure question is easy understood or not how i wrote this so income minus savings is equal to expenditure or else you can also write like this expenditure plus savings is equal to income you in both the way you will get the same answer but our final target is to find what is the salary of the person that is income of the person q understood or not now now just cross multiply this becomes 9x minus 18,000 is equals to 8x minus 12,000 so now 9x and 8x will be x 
18,000 thousand and twelve thousand will be six thousand. So finally, we got the value of x is equal to six thousand. But our target is to find what is the salary that is income of the person P. So income of the person P we have taken as three x and x is equal to six thousand. So six thousand into three will be eighteen thousand. So eighteen thousand will be the income of the person P. So friends, understood or not? How easy it is, right? I have not used the traditional method. as well as i have not used any shortcut so we have used one simple note that income is equals to expenditure plus savings by using that formula i have just derived it so income minus savings is equal to expenditure or else you can write the same stuff right same thing as expenditure plus savings is equal to income so in both the way you will get the same answer in next question or else i can solve like that right so in both the way you will get the same answer but you need to know how to write this equation alone this stuff alone is important right so in most of the books they will not explain all these concept they directly write 3x minus 6000 is equal to 2 so you need to understand that income is equal to expenditure plus savings that's it so answer for the first question where the income of the person p is 18000 question number 2 so a and b have a monthly income in the ratio 5 is to 6 and the monthly expenditure is in the ratio 3 is to 4 so if they save 1800 and 1600 respectively so find the monthly income of p so our target is to find the monthly income of b so similarly they have given all the values like income right two person income is how much 5 is to 6 and the two person expenditure is how much 3 is to 4 and the first person savings is how much 1800 and the second person's amount will be 1600 so he saves 1600 and the first person saves 1800 so our target is to find what is the monthly salary of the person b that is second person so what do you need to do so you need to remember that basic uh, formula that is income is equal to expenditure plus savings or else we can say income minus savings is equal to expenditure so income of the first person is how much 5x income of the second person will be 6x so income 5x minus of savings so first person savings will be 1800 so divided by the second person income minus savings second person income is how much 6x minus of the second person saving will be 1600 is equals to their expenditure so both the expenditure will be 3 by 4 understood or not so now just cross multiply it so when you cross this 5 into 4 will be 20 so 20x minus of so this will be 0 0 8 fours are 32 3 so 4 7 got it so is equal to this will be 18x minus of 0 0 18 4 48 So 20x and 18x will be 2x is equals to so 7200 minus 4800 will be 2400 right so 2400 so x is equal to 1200 so 1200 will be the value of x but our final target is to find what is the income of the second person that is b so b's income is how much 6x so 6 into 1200 so resultant will be 7200 so 7200 will be the income of the second person that is p understood or not so this is the easy way to solve this question in case if they are asking like uh, giving the values of income and asking the expenditure then you can write the formula here as income and here as expenditure understood or not right so what you need to find in case if we need to find the expenditure write the expenditure value here in case if we need to find the income of the person write income as 5x and 6x Right? If they are asking like expenditure of the second person, write as 3x and 4x here, and then remaining all the value as it is, you will get the final answer. Got it? So answer for question number two, where the monthly income of the person B will be 7,200. Question number three, a man spent a part of his monthly income and saves a part of it. The ratio of expenditure to a savings is to 26 is to 3. So if the monthly income is seven thousand two fifty, so what is the amount of his monthly savings? So when just here, all the previous two question, what we solve, they are talking about two person. So P and Q monthly income, monthly expenditure, etc. Similarly, the previous question, A and B monthly salary and then monthly savings, etc. But here in this question number three, they are talking about only one person. They are talking about a man spend a part of his monthly income. So only one person they are talking about. Whatever be the formula is same. So income is equals to expenditure plus savings. 
So now according to the question, you can able to see the if the monthly income is 7,250, they have given that directly the monthly income is 7,250. But what is the target? Our target is to find what is the person monthly savings. So two values they have given in a ratio that is expenditure and savings is 26 is to 3, which means the expenditure will be 26x and the savings will be 3x. Our target now it is to find the monthly savings. So monthly savings will be 3x because they are not talking about two person. They are talking about only one person. So we can easily say that the first person that is the person only one person expenditure and savings will be 26x and 3x. So expenditure of the person will be 26x and the savings of the person will be 3x. So this becomes 29x is equal to 7250. So x is equal to 250. So 250 will be the value of x understood or not right if there are two person we need to divide the first person by second person but here they are talking about only one person so it is easy to find what is the value of x by writing in a single expression right so x is equal to 250 so now our target is to find the monthly savings so monthly savings of the person will be 3x and now we found x is equal to 250 so 250 into 3 will be 750. So 750 will be the savings of the person. Understood or not? So if they have given two person or if they have given three person, four person, we need to solve differently. Right? Like dividing one and two. But here they are talking about only one person. So it is easy to write all the values in a single expression and find the x value. So after finding the x value, just check what they are asking. They are asking the monthly uh, savings of the person. So monthly savings is 3x. So x is equal to 250. So 3 into 250 will be 750. So 750 will be the savings of the person. Question number 4. So the monthly salary of A, B, C is in the proportion of 2 is to 3 is to 5. If C's monthly salary is 12,000 more than A, then the B's annual salary is. So it's very easy question. They are not talking about uh, the expenditure or they are not talking about the savings. They are just talking only about the income of the three person. So three person income is how much? Two is to three is to five. Got it or not? So now what they are saying is the third person income is 12,000 more than the first person. So the meaning is the difference between the third person and the first person salary is 12,000. So we can say that the third person will be 5x. So income of the third person is 5x. So income of the first person is 2x. So both the person income difference will be 12,000. Understood or not? Right? If one person salary is 12,000 more than the other, the meaning here is when compared to both the person salary, when you compare both the person salary, the difference will be 12,000. So only thing we can say that one person salary will be 12,000 more. Understood or not? So this can be written as 3x. So 3x is equals to 12,000. So x is equals to 4000. So finally we got the value of x is equal to 4000. So our target is to find what is B's annual salary. So B's salary is how much part? 3 parts. So which is 3x. And we already got x is equal to 4000. So 12000 will be the salary that is income of the person B. But you should not say this is the final answer. The question is very simple and everything is easy. But most of the students in the option, the first option will be 12,000. Example I am saying. In the exams you can able to see like this. First option is 12,000. Second option is 1,44,000. So most of the students after finding 12,000 they will go with option A. But it is wrong. Why? Because all the value just now in the initial stage of the video I have told you. Just check what they are asking as a final answer. Here all the values they have given in terms of monthly. Yes or no? Just see the monthly salary of A, B, C. Right? Monthly basis they have given. 3% monthly salary has been given. So we have found the monthly salary of the second person is 12,000. But what they are asking as a final answer is the annual salary. That means we need to find for 12 months. We have found the answer only for the first month. Monthly basis we have found, but they are asking for annual basis. So multiply this by 12. So 1,44,000 will be your answer. Now, this is not your answer. So 1,44,000 is the answer. So when well understood or not. So always remember this. Don't forget to uh, uh, make a mistake right? where most of the students will make a mistake in the exams. If you take RRB, Railway, uh, Regional Rural Bank or Railway exams, the questions will be asked like this. Very simple. But at the final answer, students will make a mistake. They don't know whether they, we need to calculate the annual income or monthly income. 
so read the question carefully before going with the options got it so this will be the answer for question number four so last fifth question so the income of a and b are in a ratio of five is to three so the expenditure of a b and c are in a ratio eight is to five is to two so if C spends rupees 2000 and B saves rupees 700, then what is the A savings? So when's interesting question, if you need to solve this question, you should know the concept under percentage. So previously we have solved four questions. I hope you understood all the concept of income and expenditure. So if you are strong on all the concepts, you can easily solve this question. Just see here, income of two person has been given, that is five is to three. So this is the income of two person. Let me assume this as A and B. Got it. Now, expenditure of 3 person has been given. That is A is to B is to C. That is 8 is to 5 is to 2. As well as, they have given additional 2 data. That is, person C expenditure. Sorry. So, the person C expenditure is how much? 2000. That is directly they have given. As well as, the person B savings amount is given. That is 700. So, 700 will be the savings of the person B. And they have given another value that the expenditure of the person C is 2000. Got it. By using this value, our target is to find what is the savings of the first person that is A. So we know that income minus expenditure is equal to savings. So income of first person is how much? 5x. So expenditure of first person is how much? 8y. Right. So we need to find what is the income of A and we need to find what is the expenditure of A so that the resultant savings we can easily find. So without knowing the income, without knowing the expenditure, we can't able to find the savings. So what here we can do is just, just listen carefully. So we know that the person C where expenditure is 2 ratio as well as they have given another value that the person C expenditure is 2000 rupees. So this 2 part will be 2000 yes or no. So this 2y value is equals to 2000 because C ratio expenditure is 2y. And this amount is 2000 because C expenditure value is directly given 2000. So Y is equals to 1000. So which means, so the first person A expenditure will be 8Y. And we know that Y is equal to 1000. So we can say that expenditure of A will be 8000. Understood or not? So expenditure of A will be 8000. Expenditure of B will be 5000. And expenditure of C will be 2000. So finally, by using the C data, we have found what is the expenditure of all the three person. That is A, B and C. Understood or not how I found? So if we know the expenditure of C, finding A is easy. Because expenditure of C is two part. Two part will be 2000. So one part will be 1000. So we know that A will be eight parts. So 8000, 5000, 2000 will be the expenditure of all the three person. So now another value what they have given us savings of the person b is how much 700 we know that income minus expenditure is equal to savings so income of the second person is how much 3x so 3x will be the second person income minus of expenditure second person expenditure is how much 5000 is equals to savings 700 so friends understood or not so second person saving 700 has been given so income minus expenditure equal to savings so savings value expenditure value income has been taken as 3x so now we can easily find what is the x value here so 3x is equal to 5700 so x is equal to 1900 so 1900 is the value of x so multiply for first person 5x we know that salary of the first person is 5x so 5 into 1900 so 0 0 9 5 is 45 4 9500 so 9500 is what income of the first person expenditure of the first person is what 8000 now what is our target our target is to find what is the savings of the first person so income minus expenditure is equals to savings so income of the first person is 9500 expenditure of the first person is 8000 so if you subtract both the value so 1500 will be the savings of the first person understood or not right so this is the way you need to solve the question. So first four questions are the basic level question. So if you are writing for any medium level competitive exams, you can able to see these kinds of questions. So only if you know the concept under percentage, you can able to solve it, right?
so always remember that one basic formula that is income is equal to expenditure plus savings by using that formula we will we can able to solve 100 percentage of the question that is based on income and expenditure and another important thing you need to know how to find the income if they are given savings and expenditure and similarly you need to know how to find the expenditure if savings and income has been given so if you know all these stuff then solving these kinds of question is very simple so friends that's it about this video so in this video we have solved totally five question and all the five questions are most most important as well as the concept of income and expenditure is also important so finally we have learnt everything so after uh, watching all the 10 lessons of the topic ratio proportion if we have time we can solve some of the question miscellaneous questions on the topic ratio proportion so after watching this video try to solve by taking your books try to solve that income expenditure question on your own so that you can able to be even strong on the topic so thank you so much for watching this video so if you really like it share the video to your friends those who are preparing for the competitive exams so thank you so much for watching it bye